Welcome back to Speed. Now, many people would like to have the privacy and sense of community afforded by landed property, whilst at the same time enjoying the facilities associated with condominiums. Is there a solution that can offer the best of both worlds? To answer that, Speed's Chao Yongjun examined life and community in a strata landed property. Private residential property in Singapore typically includes condominiums, landed and strata landed. Condos offer a wealth of facilities, while landed properties such as terrace houses, semi-detached and bungalows allow privacy. So, how should we classify strata landed properties? 20 years back in 1993 was the first initiative where it was launched a hybrid whereby landed property homes, we call it a strata landed, whereby you have the look and the feel of a landed home and yet at the same time you enjoy the facilities that usually come in a condominium and that's how the strata landed came into existence. Strata landed properties seemed a perfect solution giving you the best of both worlds but let's take a closer look at the trade-offs and the issues you should consider before making a commitment of this size. For those who start off from a strata housing, mainly because they are families, they have young kids around. So they want their kids to enjoy the facilities as compared to landed house. Because landed house, you probably, unless yours is a very big piece of land, if not, you probably will not get uh, that kind of facilities. Just like a condo, strata landed owners have to pay a maintenance fee that goes to the operation of the communal facilities. Depending on the facilities and share value, the sum can vary from a monthly fee of $250 to even more than $400. But who decides the share value of each unit? Common areas price are distributed based on the share value. So a person who has been contributing and a higher share value throughout the years when there's an M block proceeds, minus for his own apartments, whatever the common area being pooled, the total proceeds of the common area will be divided by the total share value of the entire estate, and a person with a higher share value will tend to benefit more. Sharing ownership of land with nice, convenient facilities means there will be communal space. However, to enjoy communal living, one also has to be a good neighbour. Can this exclusive community develop a Gotong Royong spirit? And usually you will also see in some of these development, a community will start to grow. It could be a particular from nationalities or it could be generally an expat community who, who like this kind of living communal. In some developments, the units are built so close to each other, you can almost see what your neighbour is cooking. This kampong lifestyle feels intrusive to most people today. I felt a little bit uncomfortable, you know, whereby I can actually step into my neighbours and my neighbours can actually step into my areas, you know. Uh, the main reason I put the fencing because I have a dog and I don't need to wander out of my house. Right? In 2004, the government instituted the Building Maintenance and Strata Management Act to regulate the issues related to strata properties. It serves to reduce the prevalence of disputes. But is it really necessary for the government to step in to settle a dispute between neighbours? They will seek the permission or whatever they want to do. Uh, any dispute, they will actually write to the management. Another point to note is the standardised appearance of the units. With strata landed houses, however, you will not be able to make major changes to the exterior of your house. You must request approval from the management corporation before any changes are made. Is this an intrusive amount of control? strata landed, there is a certain level of uh, community living and therefore if you don't have certain kind of guidelines if everybody start to change the facade and it is going to look very very untidy and it may cause a issue imagine if somebody who wants to just extend a bit of the balcony and somebody want to have a bay window and somebody want to have trelly somebody want to paint black and the overall, the look and the feel may not be to the advantage of the owners. New regulations in 2009 ensure the quality of strata landed property. With regulated minimum sizes, developers could not squeeze the large quantity of units into small land areas. The, the, the developer actually packed uh, so many houses in a small plot of land and uh, there's a lot of complaints. It? It's just too congested. For small plot of land, you have 
so many number of cars, you know, and they, I, the castle house is usually built around other houses' landed properties, you know, and uh, they are occupying the car, encroaching their car park space and outside. The rising popularity is also partially due to the eligibility of foreigners to purchase startup property with a condominium status. Townhouses in such a way that uh, foreigners do not need to apply through SLA as compared to Strata. Uh, Strata, uh, all the foreigners need to apply to SLA to get approval before they can actually buy the unit. As compared to townhouses, they do not need to. These days, developers tend to build more condominiums. The ratio of space to land area is much higher and offers a higher return on their investment. How will these changes in demand and supply affect the strata landed property market? There are people who value lifestyle and because these strata landed do provide pole and a hybrid, which is not a condominium living with high density. What they enjoy in a strata landed homes is low density, communal living, familiar faces, and therefore they do like it. And and this is something I'm very certain is here to stay for a long time. Condominium, landed property and strata landed each have its own unique characteristics. But there's no guarantee of finding your own special Gotong Royong spirit. 